Hey there everybody and welcome back! I'm excited to bring you today's video where I'm going to be walking you through how to upload images and files to Firebase using your free AppGyver Community Edition application. So before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Alright, so this is something I've struggled with in the past and I feel like it's a really, really powerful opportunity to enable users to build, whether it's an MVP or whatever the case, a full-fledged application, but file sharing is really, really big. So we're going to walk through this demo of the application Application. On the right hand side, I will show you how this works. I did have to get some help from someone over on Fiverr to walk me through this and help me better understand it. So now we're going to walk through it together. So first things first, we're using the preview app. So on the right hand side on my phone, I'm going to click take and upload picture. And then I will take a picture of my screen. And then you'll see that the image was uploaded successfully. So now we're going to test it by going over to Firebase. We will refresh the page. And you will note that the URL is right here for the image, which is something that we're going to need if we ever want to have any kind of a sharing app. Now, we have an image right here, which was uploaded recently. So we will click on this image, and you'll see it's downloaded. And when we open it, you see we have the file that, or the image we just took. So everything's working so far. Next up, we're going to test file uploads. So we're going to click Upload File. And then we are going to go to the desktop and then we're going to find this PDF called like and subscribe. And you'll see file slash image was uploaded successfully. And then we have the URL for that here. So now we're going to go back to Firebase and once more we will refresh the page and we will again filter by last modified. And then we will click like and subscribe. And you'll see we download it opens and that's the text, so that's literally just the document. Now, I don't know if there are going to be limitations to the actual file size, but at least right now, we know that everything's working as expected, which is good to see that we're getting the URL for the file so that we can share it if we need to. So now let's walk through the application. Now, what I'm going to be doing, because this will be a little bit different than applications that I've uh, kind of worked with in the past, so I'm going to make this full screen. Now, I am going to be offering a, an application just like this over on codelessfix.com. So I'm going to price it at $5 to make it very, very easily accessible, but I'm going to walk through how to do this yourself so you don't have to pay for it if you don't want to. So in this case, we're going to click Create New. Now, I'm going to call this, we'll just call it File Uploader. And then what we're going to do is as we're logging in, I'm going to be importing a file. So if you want to create it from scratch, this is going to be where you're going to start. However, I'm going to act like I just purchased from codelessfix.com. Just to show you, if you again want to purchase it, I'll put a link in the description. So I'm going to go to downloads and you'll see we have this, which will be the file you'll get if you were to purchase the app. Now it's designed to be incredibly basic. So we're just going to call this file upload. And I spelled that wrong. Don't worry about that. You can always change it up here if you want to. So we'll call it upload. So we have uploaded the app from our computer because we have this AppGyver file. So you'll notice you'll land directly into <clears throat> the application itself. So you don't have any authentication. It's a pretty basic flow. So for those of you that have purchased it, we'll walk through the setup, which is literally like one to two steps. And then I'll walk through the entire setup for those of you who want to try to do this yourself. So if you've purchased from codelessfix.com, you'll click on the variable slider, you'll click on project, and here you're going to type in the name of your Firebase project. So in this case, when I log into Firebase, I see mine is called sample do not delete. Now you need to remember that when you set up your Firebase account, you're not going by just whatever you see up here because let's just say it's a project if it's not giving you the full name for example then you might not be getting the exact project name so what i mean by that is if you look up here in this url you can see when i'm navigating through firebase to the right of project there is sample do not delete so i know for a fact that that is my firebase project but when you're scrolling through you'll see going through different project settings you can find out when you first set up your firebase project 
what is the unique ID that's been given to that project name. So in some cases, your Firebase project name and the ID could be the same, but you can just double check up here in the URL or go through Firebase and just again make sure. Uh, typically when I go to Firestore and then if I go to basically like the home directory, you'll also be able to see it there. But I know for a fact that mine is sample do not delete, so I'm going to take it from this URL here and copy it. And then I'm going to go over to AppGyver and I'm just going to paste it in here and click save. Now if you've purchased from codelessfix.com, that's it. All you need to do is go through the process of launching and building your app, but at least right now the app will work for you. So we're going to test it really quick just to make sure. So we're going to click launch, open app preview portal, open web view, and we have file upload right here. So now we're going to try to upload a file and what we're going to do is we're going to go to our desktop and we're going to rename like and subscribe and we're going to call it like and subscribe to that way we can tell that the new file has been uploaded so we're going to double click this and you'll see we get a success message so now we are going to go to our storage and then we will go by last modified and you'll see we have like and subscribe to dot pdf and when we click it it opens and we have the same document. So it's working now, but one thing that we need to make a note of, if you're having issues with this, this video does not cover security, but if you're not able to access or upload files, it's very likely because you do have security rules set. So I have set my storage rules for now to be allow read write if true. That means that anyone can read and write to this, it means it's an open database, which I do not recommend having, but if you don't have any sensitive data and it's not a problem, then you could do something like this. Now, I have a note here if you want to have additional security. Uh, someone on Fiverr walked me through the basics of this, so if you want, you can authenticate the request, which I'll walk through in a minute. But the idea is when you're uploading your file, there are options to, when you're uploading the file, when you're doing your post, you have a bearer right here and you could change this to whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to change the bearer when I give you this file to upload and it's just going to have something along the lines of yes or token or authentication but this is going to be that authorization that you're going to need. So now we're going to walk through building this application together. <clears throat> Now that you kind of have an understanding, and again, if you have any issues, check the link in the description, you can purchase your copy. All right, so take and upload picture is the first button that we have. So this is a single page application. Up here, you can see we just have the home page. So what we'll do first is we're gonna set up our variables. So we have three variables, one called file URL, one called project, and then this one here, which is a list of objects with five properties and you see those here. So for the first two, they are just standard variables. You can just click add app variable, name the first one project, and then add app variable, and then name the next one, whatever you wanna call it. So it's pretty simple uh, to add those two. So I'm going to remove them now as I don't need them. Now the more difficult one is this one here called file object. So you can add your app variable, call it file object. So we'll just call this one file. And then you're going to change the type over here. So you'll see when you go down to object, you'll get this little drop down, which is basically saying, hey, we're going to have multiple in this app variable. And then you can add a new property here. So when you've selected the top row, let's just say we want to add mime type, which is the first option down here. We can click the plus sign and you'll see mime type is added. Now, if we wanted to add a different type, so for example, mime type here you see is just text, which is correct. But now if we want to add a different property like size, which is a number, we're going to type in size. When we click plus, we'll find it and select it. And then you'll see that we don't have an option, or well, the option is right here, to change it to number. So basically what you need to build out now is your file object, so we don't need the first one, which is the ID. So we'll remove that property. And then you're just going to build this out. So <clears throat> mime type, which is text, 
name, which is text, path, which is text, size, which is a number, and upload URL, which is text. So you'll repeat the process of what I just did and build out this final variable. Now, in this case, I'm going to delete this variable because I don't need it anymore. Now, the project variable is going to be the value for your Firebase project. This makes it a little bit easier to just pull it in wherever you need to. If you don't want to, you can hard code that if you prefer. So now you have your variable set up. <clears throat> now we're going to drag over two buttons. So, and then our text if you want it. So the first button, let's go through this flow together. So on component tap, and then we're going to have a couple of things that are going to be done. So to get us prepared, we're going to need to install a couple of these components here or these flows. So if you click on the marketplace and then in the search, you're going to find these four. So if you have any questions, for example, we have pick files here. When I go to the marketplace, if I click pick files and you can select it and click the install button right here, it shouldn't take very long and then it'll pop up in this installed section. So you're going to do that for open web browser, pick files, resize, compress image and upload files. So once you've done that, select your first button and you're going to drag over because this is taking a picture. So you're going to scroll through and drag over this take photo and connect it to component tap. Then the first node is going to connect to show spinner, which if you're scrolling through on the left hand side is right here. Then <clears throat> you'll connect show spinner to resize compress image, which is installed over here. And then when you click on this, you'll put image quality 50 and then source image path and you'll type this out which is output take photo in double quotes and square brackets dot photo file dot path you can also go to output of another node and choose that option here but again the formula you just want to make sure that you're getting the correct output what this is doing is compressing the image so that you're not trying to upload this massive image file next up we're going to go to set app variable and we're going to select the app variable file object right here. You can use a formula or choose the app variable. In this case, you'll need to use the actual app variable file object and an assigned value. You'll get this bracket here in a custom list. And this is because we have an object with multiple properties. So I'll go through what each of these are. So the first one, is bound to a formula and this is outputs in square brackets and double quotes resize slash compress image dot image file dot name plus double quotes plus now so basically this is assigning that name to the file so we'll close this in your case you'll want to save those changes for the path you'll select here and you're going to select the logic node resize compress image and the output for the file path. For the size, you're going to do the same thing, resize compress image, and then you're going to choose the size. For mime type, same thing, resize compress image and find mime type. And then upload URL. This one's going to be different. So this one we're going to type out. So you may want to pause the video here so that you can get all this information. Um, but basically, this will already be typed out if you purchase the app from codelessfix.com. So in this case, you're going through, you see all of this information here. So what you're going to want to do is in double quotes, you'll type out this first part of the URL and then space plus space. And this is where the app variable for project comes in. We're going to assign the project for Firebase and then space plus space. And then this portion of the URL in double quotes and then plus and then you're going to type this out so it's output of resize compress image dot image file dot name basically what we're doing is we're saying send the file to this URL with this name so we'll click save and now we're going to break this down a bit to help you understand it when you're uploading a file it's not just the file the file has multiple attributes so we need to know the name of the file the path or where the file is 
the size of the file, the type of file, which is like an image, PDF, etc., the upload URL, this is part of it in this case because we're uploading to Firebase, so AppGyver is saying part of the object needs to be where I'm sending it. So we'll click Save, and then the failure here is going to be the Hide Spinner. So you can just find the Hide Spinner option over here and connect it. So now the output of your save app variable is going to be the upload files. So you should be able to go to your installed, find upload files, and you're going to change the HTTP method to post. The file to upload is going to be file object, and then the headers are going to be specified here. So you'll bind it to a formula, and this is going to be the formula. So it'll be in brackets, and again, you can kind of type this out if you're interested, pause the video here and just make sure that you're typing it out correctly. But what we've done is we've specified the content type as the output of compressed image. And this is basically one line. This is saying the output of the resize compressed image dot image file dot mime type. So we're specifying the content type here. Then in the authorization, you have your bearer, which is token here. Normally, you'll see something like this, and the bearer will be your API call or your API, um, basically like your authorization. So this will be uh, any number of things. So typically, this is how you're authenticating your user. So if you want, I have that note on the home page, but I'm not covering security here. But that's kind of the general idea. This would normally be an API key or something to help you make sure that users are enabled or able to do this. So once you have all this typed out, you don't need to have a bearer because we're not using production mode with specific security rules, but that would be here if you decide to go with that point in the future. So I just put token here. So we'll click save. And then you can go through, we don't need anything in advanced. And then when we click here, so this is connected to, in this case, it's an alert. So that was the message that pops up saying it worked. So you'll drag over an alert and then drag over a second one. These bottom two connect to the error. The top one connects to this one. And the dialog just says success, image uploaded successfully. And the alert is error, error uploading. And the dismiss button can just say OK. And then in this case, both of these will connect to the hide spinner. And the output of the success we're going to set the variable fire file URL, which we made earlier. And again, you'll pause here and you will type this out. So basically what we're doing is we're saying once the file's uploaded, get that file's location or URL. Now, if you decide to build on this app, this is what you're going to need in the future. So if a user posts a picture and they want to share that picture, this URL is what you're going to need because this is how other users can access that image. So this URL, for example, you could, we can do this one together. Um, so we'll do it in a minute when we upload a different picture. But this URL is how users are going to be able to actually see that image. So what we've done so far is allowed ourselves to take a picture and upload it. Now what I've done is I've added text. So I've dragged the text below both buttons and I'll show you my formula here. And the formula is file URL, app vars file URL. So this is in double quotes because it's static text and then space plus space and then the file URL app variable. This way we can see the file URL. In addition, I've added logic, which is open web browser, which is in the installed section. And the URL to open is just a formula with appvars.file URL. Basically, this is going to open that file if we need to, if you click it. So now we're going to set up the upload file option, and then we're going to go through with some testing real quick. So in this case, it's pretty much the exact same flow. So you should be able to pretty much cut almost everything. So you'll see if if you compare the two, we have the alert, the hide spinner, the set app variable, just like we have here. And if we scroll over, you'll see in this case, the only difference really is here it's take photo, show spinner, resize. Here it is pick file, show spinner, set app variable. So we're not compressing on this side, but if you want to speed things up, you can highlight all of these and copy them and paste them on this side. So here, 
we are going to use pick files. So you'll drag it over and you'll see file types is a custom list and we just set it to all files and we're not enabling multiple files to be picked. Then we're connecting show spinner and then we're connecting set app variable and the variable is file object and we're assigning it to a custom list. In this case, we are going to set this first part. You can pause the video here, but it's outputs of pick files dot files in brackets zero dot name, basically plus double quotes plus now. So this is setting the name for this, uh, this item or this piece of data or this file. The path is going to be outputs of pick files dot files dot uh, or bracket zero path. So again, you can pause it here and type this out. But again, we're just specifying all the properties for this file. The size, as I'm sure you guessed, is the output of pick files. And then we're specifying the file for, or the size or the location of the size. So we're just saying, hey, this is how big this file is. Then we have to specify the MIME type to say, hey, this is a PDF or this is a JPEG image, etc. And then lastly, the URL which if I'm not mistaken, you may need to double check, but it's almost identical, except in this case, we're specifying the output of pick files instead of the output of the compressed image. So this will be that URL here. And you could pause the video if you need to, and we'll click save and save. And then you're gonna go to the upload files option. So in this case here, we have post, or uploading file object, and then the headers should be pretty much the exact same, except this part is going to change to be relevant to this file type. So we're saying the content type is whatever the user uploads, authorization, and we'll just say token here. And again, this is just needed if you want to add security. Then we have the same alert success and alert error. So the success just says success, uploaded successfully, okay. And then error, upload failed, okay. Both of these connect to a hide spinner, and then we set the file URL to this. So pause and type it out if you need to, but again, we're just specifying that URL. All right, so now that we've done that, let's try to test something really, really quickly, because we already know that this is working, but we always have the option. So in this case, we have the file URL variable being set. So we can put this image here, and we can ignore that message. Sometimes they'll pop up as you're going through. So we have our source right here. We can click this and choose data and variables. Now, I've noticed when you try to assign this to a URL, sometimes AppGyver doesn't like it. So we'll use a formula, and we're going to assign it the file URL. And we'll click Save, and basically, no image is going to appear because there isn't an image. This is an empty variable. We want to see what's going to happen when we upload our file. So we're going to go to our downloads and we're going to re-upload an image that we've previously downloaded. So you'll see that the image has been uploaded. We have a URL here. When we go to Firebase and we go to our storage and you change the date modified, we have that image here because this was the last file we uploaded. So we have that image. Not only that, it is now being rendered in the application. So you would be using this URL at any point to basically enable users to share files. Now, a couple of things that you're going to need to think about is as you're uploading files, what happens if users upload files with the same name? So if you ever need to, you can refresh here and you'll see how file Firebase handles this. So you'll see we have the file with, it doesn't look like it's actually uploading the files that have the same name, at least from what I can tell. So if you think that you're running into the possibility of users uploading files with the same name, then what you would likely want to do is go back to this upload file flow and you'll see we actually named the files. So when you go in here and you'll see we have 
the app variable in the upload file and take photo functions. The custom list here, the upload URL, is where we specified the file name. If you wanted to, you could add in something like generate UUID and click save. And I'll show you what's going to happen here. So we're going to click save and we'll save the changes. So now we're going to try to upload the same file again. And you'll see it says OK. And now it's not just the name, but a bunch of random letters and numbers. And this way we can upload the file as many times as we want to. We're still getting the URL, but this way, this image is the same as this one, but it will always have a unique name. So we can upload it multiple times and a new name will always be assigned. So you'll see we've uploaded it about three times now. So we'll refresh, we'll go back to last modified, and you'll see we have the exact same name, but in this case there's a new ID assigned after each one. So you could do the same thing for take and upload picture. But at the very least, we now know that everything is done. So I hope that this was helpful for you all. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.